Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jim the Mower and today we're here to look at the Ferrex inspection camera available from Aldi. So I went through the Aldi clearance and I picked this up the other day, $39.99. The price it stated on the front, so it wasn't really a bargain. However, I've been looking for one of these because I think over the winter when we're servicing stuff or maybe in the summer when we have a breakdown, we can use one of these little inspection cameras, poke it down exhaust ports or having a look around engines and stuff, you know, it'll always come in handy. So I've got it now and I thought we'll open it live, see what's in the box and we'll see what we can do with it. So without further ado, let's crack the box open and see what we've got. Come on. I just have to get my knife. Oh. Right, there we go. Nice little case to keep it in, so that's it. That means you can lose the whole thing at once instead of just losing little bits. Oh, there's some instructions in there as well. And that's about it. We'll put the box over there. I'll put my knife away. And then we'll open up the box first, eh? Blow the instructions. We'll open up the box and see what we've got. Some little clip type things there, whatever they're for. A USB cable, some batteries, they're always handy to have the batteries in there, active energy, super alkaline, and there's a little handset and viewing screen, and I presume this is the camera, plug that end into the, uh, into the handset and that's the uh, camera end. Looks like there's a little cover on there. So I'll just close the case up, put that out of the way, plug this in. Uh, there's a little tab on there, if you can see, there's a little tab on there and it just locates into there. And that tightens up. A bit like a uh, connection in the back of your sky box or free view box or whatever you've got these days. Right, and that's the camera. Okay, we'll put the batteries in now and then we'll switch it on and see what we've got. So, to put the batteries in then, we've got a little compartment over here on the back and we just get that out. That's a bit stiff, I suppose being brand new. A little compartment there on the back and that holds the four AA batteries. There's a little ribbon in there. Now, I haven't seen these for a long time. They used to be in a lot of stuff. But if you don't know what the ribbon's for, you tuck the ribbon down into the battery compartment, like so. And then when you want to remove the batteries, put new ones in, you can pull the ribbon and that'll pull them up and out of the compartment rather than trying to get your fingers in or a screwdriver in and fettling around in there to try and release them. So that's, that's what that's for. So we'll pop that down into the bottom. I'll open these batteries. I don't know if you can hear the door rattling on the shed and squeaking, my goodness me. It's cold and windy out there. Nearly lost on them before we started. Now, the batteries, the the flat piece of the battery, I'm sure you know this, the AA batteries, flat piece of the battery always goes against the spring. So even if you can't see the little diagram down in the bottom, you just know that the negative side is always against the spring. Right, that's those in, so I'm presuming we press the on button. I haven't read the instructions, I might have to go away and read that because there's a lot more to this than I first thought. Um, I presume you'd just turn it on, 
poke the end into wherever you want it to see and you just get an image up on the screen but there's a there's a fair few buttons on there so i'm not 100 percent sure what they do i'm presuming the uh the the standby one is the the general one for on oh yeah welcome that's it and it's uh i can't see a thing <laughs> it's completely black i'm not sure i think that might be a little cover there on the end i'll see yeah Oh, right, blimey, blimey. Right, okay then. That's, uh, well, that's better than I expected. There's even some lights on there. So I don't know if we can pick anything up with that. I'll have a look. So, and if you can see anything there, I'll uh, move it round and we'll get it over my shoulder and we'll see what we can see. I just have to have a quick couple of minutes and I'll have a flick through this instruction book and see exactly what it can do and out and get the best picture on the screen and then I'll be able to show you. Right then, I've had a little look through the instruction book over here, found out what all the buttons do and, uh, and how it works more or less, I think. I've tried to film it a couple of different ways to show you uh, like the in in the most detail but it's very hard to to focus on the buttons and on on what's going on with the camera so what i'll do i'll quickly just run through these attachments and you can see how they work and then from that we'll just move on and i'll i've got a few random items from around the workshop and we can uh, put the camera in there and see what we can pick up i'll take some photographs with the actual um, machine itself and then we can put those on the on the screen and you can see now the resolution on here isn't great, um, unfortunately. It's, it's good, it's good, don't get me wrong. If you need to see something close up that you can't see with a naked eye and you can't get in there, it's good and it will work. However, if you were to film something or wanted to film something in HD, then it's not the camera for you, it, it won't do that. But I've tried it down the, the big tube here and you know, you can see light out the other end, which is all you really want to do. You just want to be able to put something in there and make sure it's not blocked. And if you can push that down and see that it's not blocked, then that's great. Or if you, there is a blockage and you can put it in and see the blockage, that's what you need to know. So that's the information that, that it will give you. It's not a, a fantastic picture, but it's good. It's good enough. It's good enough for what we need anyway. I think it is anyway. I think it is. So I'll quickly run through the buttons then. Um, on here i'll turn the the screen off so it doesn't glare and, and distract right so the top button over here it, that's to zoom in and out so that's the zoom button on there you can zoom the picture in um only once it's probably about you know it adds an extra 20 percent onto there and, and zoom in so that's that one this one here there that's the the brightness button now you can tap that and there's five levels of brightness which is brilliant because when you put it into say the the oil there the container if that was a fuel tank and you're trying to look in there and see if there's any fuel or residue left in the bottom you can put the camera in and it's quite dark in there you can uh, you can put the, the brightness of the, uh, of the screen up and see, and then you use this other button down here to put the brightness of the lamps up and it will really illuminate everything for you. So that's good. And this little button next to them there, that's the, uh, you've got play and escape. Now, play and escape, that's basically playing back your captured images. It doesn't film, it'll photograph, it won't film, but it'll photograph, um, give you not a bad image, you know, you can see what's what on there, but you can save them for future reference and look, show somebody else, this is what I saw. You can put the USB cable into the bottom of here, you can transfer them to your PC, and then from there you can send them off to whoever you want to send them off to if you've, you're trying to show somebody. I know a lot of times we have phone calls um, asking us about different machines and they've got a problem with it and we say, can you check this or have a look at that, and they can't really describe the problem to us, whereas we've got this little camera now, maybe if they had one of those, they could put that in there and they could send us an image and it gives us a, a better idea to try and diagnose the problem, you know, long distance really. So that's, that's that button. Obviously the power button's the on and off. We saw that before we pressed it and it's welcome. That's for taking photographs. And this one here is for adjusting the brightness of the LED lamps on the end. There's a little ring of LED lamps around the end there and they do light up quite brightly. So it's, uh, it's a, it's a good little tool really. Um, this just fits on the top. However, the K 
cable with it is quite stiff and I can see why it's stiff because you'd want to push it into somewhere and you want it to sort of stay wherever you put it you know it'll turn round and stay if you want to push it down a drain you want it to have enough resistance to try and push round now I do tell you this is waterproof and um, you can push it down into a drain or maybe down a fuel line or an exhaust pipe or whatever you need to do coolant system push it round obviously make it sure it's cool first and not scalding hot or else that won't do it any favours at all. So you can push that into somewhere and it's great and because it's quite stiff it'll stand up wherever you put it. However, that's not always great when you're trying to film something and you want it to just lie down on the, on the counter or whatever, you take a photo of it or drop it down into an engine somewhere. You've got to try and purposely feed it. And I did notice that when we're doing it, you have to keep tightening the, the top up on there because every time that we're sort of twisting this around and moving it this is working itself loose a little bit so that's just a, a tip for you there make sure that's screwed in tightly now these little things that came in the packets these are just little hooks um, that one on there they, they fit on over the over the top of the, the camera and they'll they'll fit on there and basically you can squeeze those round and they can act as an anchor point for the camera. This one here is a magnet. So that will pick up the others. That's a magnet there. We've got this one here is just a straight. Oh, this one here is a double hook. So if you want to get it into somewhere, you can double hook it in and it will hold tight and hold it on. And that's your camera located in there. And then we've got two more if I can pull them apart. Just a single hook, self-explanatory really. You just put the, the hook on there, like the double but just one. And then there's a little mirror on there. And I did put the mirror on, but I didn't have much success with the mirror really. So I, I'm not 100% sure how that would work. And I think the mirror is a great idea because you can poke down into somewhere, oh, fell off, poke down into somewhere and be able to look back up at the underneath of it. But with a lot of machinery that we use, we'd be able to go in from some sort of angle, more or less to where we need to get to. So you'll be able to bend the end of this up, push it through, hook it, and you'll be able to look back up there without having to look at a, a mirror. The, the image isn't great on here as it is without looking at a reversed or upside down image anyway. So you need to just work out what, what will be best for you. So you've had a look at the, the handset, you've had a look at the camera. Now, I've got a couple of random items. Like I said, we've got a pipe in the corner over there. I've got some gear oil here with a, a little bit of oil in the bottom. Uh, I've got a, a box of nuts there. And I thought if I just put the camera into each of these, I'll be able to see on this screen here and I'll be able to take some stills with it. And when I take the stills, I'll be able to put those on the, on the screen and you'll be able to see exactly what I can see then. Because otherwise we're trying to film this and it just, it just won't work, it just won't work. So first thing we do then, we'll turn the camera on again. You know it's coming on because the lights have come on and it'll say welcome on there. So that's good. And then we've got an image. So that's another thing is the image with this camera is obviously it's the, that is the orientation of it. So when this goes into something and turns round or whatever it is, it's upside down or roundabout. So you can always press that button on there and that will rotate the screen 180 degrees and you can sort of put the image up right again. So that's a handy tip. First of all, then I'll use the tub of oil and I'll put the camera in there and I'll just see, I sort of simulate a fuel tank, I suppose. If we've got a, a, a big mower in here, we'd be able to use a fuel tank and just put this in and see if there's anything in there, I don't know how well it will work. Oh yeah, I can see, I can see, in fact, I can see the reflection of the camera. I'll take a quick image of that. Right, so that's taken a photograph of that. Then I'll point it towards the edge of the tub and you'll be able to see where the liquid meets the edge of the tub. So, That'll work. Oh, I'm quite chuffed with that, you know. Put that in there. That is like dark, <laughs> obviously gear oil. And uh, it's quite dark in there in a blue container and it's not so bright in here today being winter. So that's good. I'm chuffed with that. Now I'll get my piece of pipe. Now 
Now, with this piece of pipe, what I'm trying to sort of show you is that basically, if you're allowed to look into an inspection pipe or an inspector pipe anywhere, imagine this end sealed off. You can only look in there and you want to see if it's clear run down to there. So you're a bit stuck really. If you can't get to that end to see if there's a blockage before it goes down or whatever, you can't see. So what we'll do, we'll put the camera in down there and we can see, we can clearly see light at the end of the tunnel. So that's great, I can see that. And then I can turn the camera around just so you can see the image. Hold on, I better take a photograph of that one down there, hadn't I? So I'll take a photograph of that. That's just a circle at the end, not very exciting. <laughs> you can just see a circle of light, but you would know that it wasn't blocked. That's what I'm trying to point out. You know that it wasn't blocked. Right, let's have a look, see if I can see. Uh, let's have a look. We can have a look at one of the welds on the pipe on the inside. If you had to inspect that, you could have a look on there. And then we can see out the other end of the pipe. And with that, we can see the tub of gear oil on the workbench next to us. So I'll take a photograph of that. Right, so that's that. Some of those might be upside down or not quite right, but at least we've had a go. Right, I'll just put my flue pipe down, back down on the floor. Put that out of the way. And then lastly, we'll see, give this a go in the box of nuts and bolts. M10 hexagon nuts. Oh, we get through, we get through tons of them, tons of them. Right, I'll show you first. They're in there and that's what they look like. So that's that. And then imagine if we couldn't see in the box and we'll put that in. Wow, that's the best image yet. Definitely, that's absolutely fantastic. I can't believe that. That's the clearest image yet. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the amount of light that, that's reflecting off the, the nuts in there, but that is amazing. That, that is really amazing. That's a really quality image, that is. I'll be really pleased with that. Really pleased. So, however, you don't very look, often look inside boxes, do you, to see if there's any nuts and bolts in. But it just gives you a bit of an idea of what you could use it for and, uh, and the sort of quality you'll get. Now, I'll turn that off there because I'm going to take that out tomorrow. We've got a lot of mowers in storage and stuff for winter. So I'm going to take that out tomorrow, uh, tomorrow and then when we have a look round, I should try it in the air filters and stuff and see how we get on. Maybe do a follow-up video and, and see what we can do with it. But there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that there. I hope it meant a little bit of something to you. It's 39.99 at Aldi. Um, I'll put a link to Aldi below. I don't think it's on their website anymore, but you never know, they might have these things back in stock. You can buy them from other retailers and different brand names, and they're roughly about the same price, or you can buy a branded one and they're anything up to like two, three, four hundred quid if they're full HD. Thanks for watching anyway. If you like the videos, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe. I'm Jimmy the Mower. I'll catch you on the next one.